Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video five, and today we're talking about the dual VCO. So go over here to the presets and under the eight templates folder, select the init jupe eight and then navigate back to the main tab. And this is going to set this up for us. Now, if you look over here in analog one, this is going to be modeled after the Roland Jupiter eight. And then if we scroll our mass wheel up, it's gonna to go to analog number two, which is the Roland Jupiter six. And we also have an ideal mode, which is a different type of waveform that we're gonna to get to in just a moment. So what's different about this one is we only have two oscillators, VCO1 and VCO2, and down here on the bottom right is going to be the mix or the blend in one knob between one and two. So all the way to the left, we're only going to hear the saw wave from number one. All the way to the right, let's change it to a triangle wave. We're only gonna hear VCO number two, and this is anywhere in between how we would mix them. Pretty self-explanatory, so let's go to just number one or four right now. Now we have a triangle, we have a saw, we have a square or pulse, and over here, let's turn this down just a little bit here. And over here on the left-hand side, once we're selected on the square pulse, we can change this pulse width to whatever we want. And if you notice, if we go all the way to the top, we actually go all the way to silence, which is very interesting because a lot of synthesizers don't allow you to go all the way to the top, for providing just silence. So I thought that was kind of a cool little touch there. Now we can modulate this here, and this is already set up by default on LFO number two, which is down here. So if we want to do some pulse width modulation, we just increase the slider. And it's going to change. Now, keep in mind below here, this is automatically selected on one plus two, which means that if we have both of these oscillators selected to a square pulse wave, that means one and two are able to be pulse width modulated. So all the way to the left, we have VCO1, and let's drop this down to one octave for number two, so we have a difference in pitch, so easy to discern the two. So that's number one getting uh, modulated from the pulse width. And then same with VCO number two, down one octave. Now if we turn this to one, you'll notice that VCO2 will stop the modulation. So that's what that switch there does. So moving on from that, what's actually very cool about this oscillator here, let's go all the way to the left to VCO1. So we have our different waveforms. Now we can select multiple ones. We can have a triangle and a saw wave. Or we can have a triangle and a square. Or a triangle and a noise. And this right here I find fascinating because we have this regular noise, right? But if we add in an oscillator, a different shape, it's almost influencing that shape. So we have that shape that's already getting drawn, but we have the noise on top of that. So we could have a noisy square pulse wave, noisy saw, noisy triangle, so on and so forth. And keep in mind, if we have all these switches off, when we press a key, we won't hear anything because we haven't told it what waveform to play. So for some reason, these lights are off and you don't hear anything, don't go looking in your settings, just select a waveform and you should be back in business. Now below that we have sync, seeking VCO2 to number one, which I just did that uh, as an in-depth kind of look on the previous video on the triple VCO. So if you haven't checked that out, go look at that because we did talk all about what hard sync, is, hard sync is and the visual representation of that. So moving on from there, we can change these octaves as we talked about before, but also on VCO2, we have this detune, which functions the same way as the triple VCO. And it does the same thing with the knob. Once we turn this more and more, let's put these both to saw waves. This right here is going to toggle over. I thought that was very interesting how they added that there. Now over here at the bottom, we have two of these modulation sources. So we have this knob and this knob. So let's put both of these to LFO for consistency sake. So when this is on one, we have LFO two affecting the pitch. So let's turn this knob here. We can listen to VCO one only. So we know that this knob is able to modulate the pitch of VCO one. If we go to VCO two, nothing is happening because it's only on one. Now this is two independent knobs, so we can have this one do an LFO, and then maybe we have this one have it doing a different shape modulating the pitch. So we have two assignable knobs to change the pitch, if it's on one, to just this first oscillator. Now if we, for demonstration purposes, let's change the second one, it's gonna do the same thing as the first one because it's the same modulation source and the same modulation amount, or the same, it's doing the same modulation to the pitch. So that's gonna be the same as when we move this one. 
Now, if we select this to both right over here, if we're on VCO number one, let's do some modulation here. Let's go over to VCO two. These knobs are both going to be affecting both of these oscillators. Now, number two is basically the same thing as one, but just looking at number two. So if we go to VCO number one and we see some modulation amount, nothing's happening because it's only targeting number two. As soon as we turn to VC number, VCO number two, that's when the modulation will happen. Now, if you go into split mode, these are going to be independent for oscillator number one and oscillator number two. So if we have this VCO number one, it's changing the pitch here. Two is not because this knob is controlling number two, but there's no modulation happening. As soon as we turn it, then it starts working right over there. So that's basically how this one worked. It's really not too different from the VCO, just a couple slight differences. So if you understand the triple VCO pretty well, and I highly recommend you watch that video if you haven't, because like I said, we went through the sync with a, with a visual kind of representation of it. And once you get a grasp of the triple VCO, a lot of the other oscillator panels are gonna be very intuitive and easy to use. So before we leave, let's check out the different shapes of the waveforms with these different shape here. So. We, let's start with analog number one, and let's kind of just look at the triangle wave, which is gonna be kind of interesting. Let's take off our modulation there. So it's interesting because this looks like a sine wave on the oscilloscope, but it's actually technically a triangle wave, and it sounds like a triangle wave, so it's a very interesting thing. Now let's go to analog number two. Or uh, analog, here we go. Let's bring our output up, and it's just slightly different. A little bit more buzzy, and actually in the oscilloscope, it looks like a triangle wave. Now let's go to ideal. That sounds more like the ideal form and sound of a triangle wave, which is probably why it's called ideal. And it might sound like this is subtle little changes here, but once you have an oscillator patch kind of going, you have some saw waves, you've mixed in your different waveforms, you might have some pulse width and modulation stuff going, you'll be surprised how much this shape can actually change your sound. So once you have something cool going, maybe kind of scroll through these different shapes and these different revisions and kind of just listen to how they sound. And maybe you might find that analog two might be a little bit more appropriate to your sound than analog one, even though you started making your sound on analog one. So something to keep in mind. So that was the dual VCO. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.